Dave's, Dave's and Molly Hatchet. And, but at the time he didn't have a gig and we were just going to do like a one-off tour of Europe, I think. And then in 2004 and it went really good. And, uh, Dave stayed around for about a little over a year and then ended up going back to Molly Hatchet, which was totally fine and good with us. I mean, he started that band. He should be in that band. So, um, and I just kept it going because it went well in Europe and it's, uh, just, it's getting bigger every year. So I'm just, just going to stick with it. Cool. Hey, we got a lot of guys in chat, guys and gals, uh, saying hello to you. Ryan and Marie, uh, Herb, Ray Van Sant. Uh, I don't know if you're in chat yet or not. No, I'm not right now. I so. can't type and talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, brother. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to type it in chat. I'll ask Mike. Um, so, Mike, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into the music business and you know, some of your influences. Well, I just, you know, I've just always loved music from the time I was really little. I mean, it's just, it's like been my one true love through that constantly run through my life. And it's, uh, I got into the business actually after I, I'd had a little band and then I got one of the guitar players and Leonard Skinner to name my band when I was in high school and and I just, you know, just been chasing after it like a ton of other people have done, you know. And uh, I got lucky a few times. And and um, I'm just still, you know, I've been at it for 30 years. And most people retire after 30 years of working. But I'm just, I don't even see it on the horizon. Damn. So what's, uh, you know, what was the name of your first band? Helen Highwater, like a girl's name. Helen Highwater. <laughs> You yeah, ain't lying. A, yeah, man, it was a, it was actually a really good band for as young as we were, and it was uh, I mean, they were like nineteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty years old. It wasn't a bad band at all, and we stayed together for quite a few years and did a lot of shows. Heck, we opened for Leonard Skinner and Alan Collins band, and others did you know played with some big name acts, and you know we stuck around for quite a while, and uh, we still like gonna do like the our once a year reunion show you know and i haven't i don't know i hope everybody that is still alive that was in the band <laughs> <laughs> right i know I, I got friends i'm growing up they're dropping like flies and i know it's, it's just awful it's absolutely awful you get to be this age and you start losing friends it's it's terrible i know last year i had about i think it was 11 funerals to go to that's entirely too many. You ain't lying. Hey, that, we got one question. Somebody's asking if you guys have any shows in New England planned. We are working on that. It's, as a matter of fact, hopefully in August, I think it, we're working on a date in August up in, in Pennsylvania at a place called Havana's in New Hope, which I played there with Blackfoot. And we'll probably come up there with the Monsters of Southern Rock, which is basically Skinny Molly, and um, we have three guests come up and play with us. It's like Skinny Molly does a, a five or six original songs, and we bring up guys from Blackfoot, and the guy who was the second singer in Molly Hatchet, um, Jimmy Farrar. But Greg T. Walker and Charlie Harger from Blackfoot come up and play Blackfoot stuff, and it's real cool because, you know, having those guys around, it makes it sound like Blackfoot, the original band. Right, right. Well, we were talking about a little bit northern than that, you know, them damn Yankees way up there, like Vermont area. Man, we just did, we did a, we were there a year, about a little over a year ago, I guess, but we don't have anything planned up that far right now. But if somebody's got a gig, you can get me on Facebook. <laughs> hey, actually, we got somebody in our chat um, said we need a we need a gig here in Southern Delaware. I'm in Delaware. That'd be great. Yeah, we we are, we were talking. You and I were talking about that. I would, I'd like to put that stuff together over in Maryland and stuff. We were talking about. Yeah. Well, Delaware State Fair, I know, is booking right now for gigs. 
Well, that'd be a good gig from Monsters of Southern Rock. That'd be awesome. Right. Uh, how about any Canadian tours? Uh, one of our guys that does all of our glass work, we actually have beer mugs and stuff like that for sale on our website. But he's up in Canada, and he was asking if you guys had any Canada tours planned. Canada is a sticky subject. There's somebody in the band, and I'm not going to name who, isn't allowed in the country. <laughs> really? I got about 32 states I'm not allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why they call me Dillinger. <laughs> there you go. No, it's, uh, they, they have a real strict, real strict entry thing. You know, it's like if you've even, if you've had some sort of, I guess in Canada, a DUI is, uh, is uh, a felony, and yeah. they won't allow felons into the into the country. Now, the guy I'm talking about hasn't had a DUI. Has He's been charged with DUI, but hasn't been found guilty. But they won't be, they won't let you in, even if you're on the books. They have, like, like they're tied into the national, our national um, records where they can see who's, you know, who's pending and who's not pending in court. So, you know, they, they, so they, they'll definitely stop anybody from coming in that's got that. Cool, cool. Yeah, I know. I got a buddy of mine that went to uh, Canada to meet. He met this girl on the Internet, moved up there, living with her for I don't know how many years. Well, she passed away. He moved. He went to move back to the States. They actually locked his ass up because of, um, because he had um, some type of warrant on him or something like that when he was coming through the you know through the line. Yeah. And, um, they hooked him up, hemmed him up for a couple months, and he was like, "Why the hell didn't you guys lock me up when I was leaving the states?" Yeah, yeah. don't let you leave. It's that coming back. It's tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got. Uh, I guess I don't. I, if I say your name wrong, excuse me, but uh, Rena, she said she they'd love to see you guys in Florida. Billy Clopton, uh, or yeah, Clopton said he to tell you hello. Um, hey everybody, Rena's a really Rena's a really talented photographer. She runs this thing on Facebook uh, um, called Rock Legends Photographers. It's from the Rock Legends cruise. If y'all get a chance, go check their work out. There's a bunch of talented photographers on there. They're going to put great pictures of a bunch of classic bands. It's a really neat, neat page. She's a buddy of mine, so i got to give her a shout-out. All right. Uh, Jenny Riddick, uh, she's in here, and she says to say hello. Well, hey. Then we got another dude. Uh, he likes to play this game Pot Farm on Facebook. Or you get There's to a game called Pot Farm on Facebook. I didn't even know that. Man, you get to go around and plant weed and Jesus. build shit and hope the rangers don't catch your farm and stuff. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Good God. His name is Boniface Actus. <laughs> He's That's a... some kind of name, man. It's, it sounds like a name of a prog rock band. <laughs> right. He's out in Alabama. He say, he's giving his shout out, you know, to Alabama for you. Shout out to Alabama, man. Uh, man, I got a lot of people coming in here. So, um, what, before you guys actually, before you started doing your own thing, did you play with any name, you know, well named bands or anything? Not before. It was like when I had Hell and High Water going. It's it was after that was over. Is when I got the Skinner gig, which I did for about three years. And um, then after that, I just, I did a, a band called Driving Sideways, which we did a, a bunch of NASCAR dates and put out an album for NASCAR, which was something I got into with Skinner. They were kind of doing the same thing. And then uh, after that, I did a, an album called Brave New South, which was more like a country rock thing. And then we put skinny. I did some Southern Rock All Stars things for a few years. That was fun. And, you know, I kind of drifted around there in the late 90s until we put Skinny Molly together in 04. That's been kind of my focus ever since. It's been, you know, 
nine years almost. It'll be nine years in a couple months. That's just what you know. Just where I'm at, I got a got a good handle on it. And it's and it goes over well wherever we play. So I'm just gonna stick with that. Paul, what's that? Paul Coleman says to say hello. Hey, Paul. So, uh, hey, did you? Um, I'll tell you what, I think I still have two of the CDs here. Um, the Tuneful guy didn't send me any. He said he was going to hook me up with a couple more for the show. Um, but, I'll tell you what, I've got some t shirts you can give. I've got a t shirt or two you can give away. We'll just send them straight from here. That sounds good to me. Yeah, I was going to send them to you, but I thought, heck, we'll just get on the radio and we'll just send them straight from here and avoid double postage. No problem. I, I'll tell you what I do. I usually do the own, my own trivia, uh -huh. but since they, the listeners seem to think that I'm a little bit too hard. <laughs> so, um, and I use Google, and I type, on this day in music history, and I find this website with questions, but people don't seem to be able to find the answers. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mike's going to give up, you know, a couple T-shirts, so I'll let Mike ask a question, and whoever answers the correct answer um, will win a T-shirt. You got a question you want to ask him, Mike? Okay, how about this? What was Buddy Holly's real name? All right. So, here we go. First trivia question. What was Buddy, Buddy Holly's real name? And you will win a t-shirt. Charlie Brechtel just joined in. I might even be able to bring him in on this call. I thought I lost you there for a second. No, yeah. I'm still here. Come on, people. They invented a great website years ago called Google. <laughs> <laughs> Boniface said, was it Charles Harden Holly? He's right. He is correct. All right. Hey, Boniface, if you want to send me an email at Dillinger at BIC com, get me your mailing address and your name. I'll pass it on to Mike and you'll get your t-shirt, brother. All right. And tell him to put what size too. Yeah, and your size. So, hey, um, what's one of your favorite? I only have the Haywire and a couple of the other songs, um, but they're live, I do believe. But what was what is one of your favorite Skinny Molly tunes? Man, it's kind of hard because I like them. I like them all kind of the same because I wrote most of them. But it's <laughs> kind of hard to pick a favorite. But I guess. From our No Good Deed album, we've got a song called Better Than I Should, which is one of my favorite ones. Right. And from the from Haywire Riot, if I had to pick one, I guess I would say If You Don't Care or After You. Either one of those I like. They're right. fun to play. So. All right. Well, I'm going to – how about if I play uh, After You and um, we'll come back and – Hopefully, we'll have some more questions for you. Cool. And uh, get these people. I know I got a lot more people that are coming in, chat. So um, here we go. A little bit of After You by Skinny Molly. Charlie says hello, and uh, we'll see. Let me see something. How many people you got in? I guess I could go on and look, couldn't I? Let's Shit up. They could have named some 
<laughs> you might have to turn that one off <laughs> or turn it down. There's a little speaker up at the top. You can um, pull the drop down. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. It'll just give you a lot of feedback if you if, when you try to talk and. Sorry. Okay. And we got a lot of. I don't even. I don't even smoke weed, but we got a lot of potheads in this damn thing in this <laughs> <laughs> on this station, and I and I got a little. I got a little. Um, a little clip that I play all the time. It's of a, like somebody smoking a bong. I saw something about that puff puff pass. Is that it? Um, that's well, that's an inside joke that that uh, guy, the guy Pepper Panette, actually um, actually started. Um, <laughs> and um. So now, like, anytime anybody sends an 8x10 or something like that to, you yeah. know, to my house for, you can't see it, but I have a whole wall of 8x10s, of autographed 8x10s and stuff like that. And wow. um, whoever has them send them to the station, they always have them put to Dillinger at BIC Radio Puff Puff Pass. <laughs> and, um, I, as I was saying... Um, I have a little clip. I'll play it here, but it's like of somebody smoking a bong, and everybody's oh God, that's funny. And everybody's like, "Yeah, Dillinger, hit one for me, hit one for me." So, <laughs> but uh, all right, here we go. We're back. All right, we're back with Mike. Is Mike Test? Hey, uh, Charlie Brechtel just came in the thing. If uh, he said to tell you hello and thanks for coming on the show. Uh, what's this say? Southern Nights are killer CDs. Southern Nights, that was a live CD I did when I was in Skinner, actually. No, I was in, when I was in Skinner, it was a CD they did that was only in Germany. But they there are some imports that have come over, but it was mostly like, mostly it was, it was made for the European market. Well, we, uh, hey, Marty Douglas... Just came in. Uh, he said, "Looking forward to see you guys getting back." Um, what's it? Something about three tunes and Gateshead, the new CD. Yeah, we played uh, Gateshead's a town near Newcastle in, in England, and uh, we play a joint up there called the Three Tons, and it's a it is a rocking little joint. Cool. It's, it's, it's a real cool venue. Here's an old uh, school. Made of yours, Wes E Wing. Wes E Wing. Mike Gestas says, Hey, Wes. He said you were a couple years behind him. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually have another girl. Her name's Tammy that said she went to school with you. She did. I know who you're talking about. <laughs> She's a troublemaker. Well, she said she was going to let us in on a couple secrets, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some of them uh, behind the bleacher scenes or something there. Well, Tammy used to be a cheerleader, and Tammy Tammy was a cheerleader in high school, and there was no cheerleader looked better in a cheerleader outfit than Tammy did. <laughs> right, right. Actually, Charlie just wrote to me. Um, you were a band in two thousand and five. Which uh, Charlie actually opened up for you at Love Ride. Two thousand five. It could have been a Southern Rock All Stars gig. It could have been anything like that. I, I, two thousand five. I was doing. I was playing in like four different bands. <laughs> one of those. 
one of those uh like me i can't remember half the 80s yeah <laughs> it's like it's uh look man i'm still trying to bring southern rock into the 90s <laughs> right right yeah he was a, he said you guys you were actually in the band and they are they opened up for you guys yeah i'm not sure I've, i mean if i if he named the venue i might could remember it he said it was at the venue was actually the love ride out in california <sighs> you know i should remember it but i don't <laughs> then he also at the buffalo chip in sturgis yeah, the buffalo chip that's gonna we're uh, working on that for sturgis this year right yeah um that's that's a really good gig out that way he um that was actually monsters of rock at sturgis wasn't it yeah we did monsters of southern rock in uh at the glencoe campground and at easy riders but there's been some sort of discrepancy with uh easy riders and uh the magazine i guess and they've had to rename so i don't know what they're going to do this year right uh well actually charlie is very good friends with woody at the uh -huh. buffalo and uh charlie just said well tell him i'm going to talk to woody that's awesome thanks charlie so uh, that'd be great to see you guys out there i actually yeah. I actually put on my web page a donation button to get Dillinger to Sturgis to broadcast this show live. Hey, there you go, man. There you go. We'll help you out with that, too. <laughs> it was, uh, it, we played last year at, with Monsters of Southern Rock, and it went really good. We played with Fog Hat, and, and those, they're really good friends of ours, so, um, I was hope we're hoping to do it again this year. Sturgis is like the it's you know you if you've been there you know until you go you don't know it's really great. I think I've been out there the last two years in a row or three and playing. So hopefully we get it together for this year too. Uh, Tammy actually just came in. She's here. Hi, Tammy. <laughs> oh, we got something else. Let's see. Uh... Paul Coleman said, I think that's when he dated Joy back in high school. Julie? Joy uh, Behar. Joy uh, Behar. <laughs> oh, he's just, he, oh, God. All right, thanks, Paul. <laughs> uh -oh. it, You're now banned from my Facebook page, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Tabby says, hey, Mikey. Anyway, hey, um, let's see. Somebody else just asked a question. Uh, something about, well, Michelle Adams, she's, um, she just lost uh, her other half not too long ago. Um, we dedicate, I dedicate a bunch of different music to her and stuff like that. She lost a very good close friend of hers. But she asked, um, she wanted to know something about the Van Sant tribute band. Is that anything you have anything to do with? No, I don't know anything about it, actually. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, it's like since the last couple of years in Skinny Molly, it's like I've stopped doing anything else for the most part. And it's it's I don't know about a lot of the tribute stuff because we've, we've stopped playing cover stuff, or, or not completely, but we're, we're doing 80% of our own stuff nowadays. Finally, and uh, it's uh, I, I, I don't keep up with a lot of the other bands, to be honest, because I'm too busy working on ours. Cool. Uh, what were some of your, I, I, we were talking about your earlier days, what were some of your musical influences growing up? I saw the um, other night we were talking, you asked me about blues. Yeah, I, was, I, had, I love, man, there's, there's some of all kinds of music I love. It's like, I grew up listening to country music because my dad, and I loved a lot of the old country music, and I still do. When I started playing guitar, it was like Skinner and Zeppelin and ZZ Top and Hendrix and Clapton and the Stones and, you know, stuff everybody was listening to back then. Fog Hat was one of them. Outlaws. 
<coughs> excuse me, stuff like that. Just, you know, everything that was happening at that time or a few years earlier. And, um, but, you know, that's basically where it kind of stopped for me until Stevie Ray Vaughan came along. I mean, he's like the last guitar hero I had. And it's, uh, just, you know, it just hadn't been, it seemed like things just, you know, when things changed in the 90s, people that were playing our kind of stuff were just kind of left behind or it came became trivia. So it became a trip, you know, to try to remain relevant through the late 90s and early 2000s. And listen, those were tough years for our kind of music. And thankfully, it's gotten better in the past four or five years. So, But yeah, I was listening to the same stuff everybody else was, except country. I, I listened to more country than most people I knew because I grew up on it. So tough years for our kind of music. And thankfully, it's gotten better in the past. What's up, brother? Hey, um, I... Yeah, I was listening to the same stuff everybody else was. Except country. I, I listened to more country than most people I knew because I grew up on it, so... Right. Hey, oh, um, Charlie's trying to join the conversation. Yeah, I'm trying, but I don't know how to... Hey, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Mike, say hello to Charlie. Hey, Charlie. How you doing, Mike? I'm Thank good. you for coming on the show, brother. Hey, man, no problem. Thanks for having me. Hey, um, Charlie's trying to join the conversation. Oh, yeah, I'm trying, but I don't know how to... Hey, um... Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Mike. Hold on. Uh, Charlie, you're going to have to turn that down. Keep going, Mike. All right. Okay. Do we have everybody here now, Charlie? Yeah, I'm here. All right, All right great. Yeah, hey, Charlie. Hey, Mike, man. Hey, uh, uh, yeah, I played a, I, I don't know if he was in the band, but in 2005, we did the Love Ride. We opened up for Skinner and, uh, uh, and also at the Buffalo Chip. And, uh, hey, man, if you give me all the information, I'll get in touch with Woody and try to get you guys in the chip. That'd be great, man. That's a, that's a really good gig. I, we were we were supposed to play at a different venue. I'm not sure what's going to happen with it, but I would love to play at the chip. That's a really good place. Well, Woody's a really good friend of mine, man. I've been playing there for like 13 years now, and I never my contract with him is a handshake. That's great. That's just how it should be. You can relate to that being a southern boy, being being in the southern thing, huh? Yeah, man. It's like it's like even stuff I do over in Europe. It's like there's a lot of it. You know, the, the, a lot of it isn't even on paper. But I, I've been working with the same guys for fifteen years, you know, so it doesn't have to be. Yeah, man. I, I got the same thing going on in Russia right now, man. I went over there and they just fell in love with the way we sing and the way we. Uh, of course, all my stuff's about motorcycles, and they're really into motorcycles over in Moscow. Yeah, they are. That's a really cool place to go. I've always wanted to play there. I got invited to play there 10 years ago, but that was like, you know, capitalism was taking hold not in a great form, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, now it's uh, pretty damn cool, man. It's kind of like back when we, we was uh, the 70s and 80s when everything was all cool, man. It's like that over there now. Yeah, I know. That's what I understood. That's what yeah, I it's understood. like going back in time. Yeah, I mean, I'm dying to go over there and play. I, that's the that's the one place we haven't played there in Australia that I really would like to play. Yeah, yeah. man. Uh, well, maybe I'll I can hook up something for next year, man. Uh, I'm gonna go again. In, I'm going. I'm going in February. Uh, they want to talk to me about doing a TV deal, uh, kind of like they got over here with the motorcycle thing. The real reality motorcycle show. Yeah, cool. yeah. And I'm you know friends with the Moscow Hell's Angels over there, so I mean I definitely got a lot of actors I could pick from. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. But uh, man, we're gonna be using music for the soundtracks and stuff, so I might be able to hook you up on that. You know, uh, and then next year when we, do, uh, I'm gonna be doing the concerts every year. It looks like it's uh, big motorcycle uh, concerts out there. Uh, uh, the sponsors are Total Flame Cigars, and they got the cigars named after bikes like uh, Panhead and Show. I think, I, you know, it's just the whole thing is wrapped around motorcycles, and uh, they're actually Cuban cigars, man. Uh, the guy that uh, uh, hooked up the thing, him and his partner, they went and found all the uh, uh, family. Uh, see, when Castro took over, 
he kept the names of the families, but the families actually ran off and went to Nicaragua and uh, all these different places. And uh, these guys went and found them and uh, and hired them to make the cigars. So the cigars are really the the real deal. That's really cool because I, I hate having it's it's uh you know I, I I'm a cigar smoker myself and I. I have to bring them back from Europe because we can't get the good ones here. Uh, hey, dude, you can give me your address, and I'll I'll get uh, when I go in February. I'll I'll come home and I'll send you a nice uh, selection. That'd be awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Hey, so you ever had a chance to play with Greg back in the day? With Greg Allman? Yeah. No, I've never played with him. Never once. I've met him several times. I know that he came to one of our shows in Daytona when Skinny Molly was playing down there. But I have never played with him. Yeah, well, he, he we were doing it when the Allman Brothers broke up. You know, I, I moved to California, and uh, they had a bunch of bands out here, brother, back in the day that were all trying to be Southern bands. Yeah. Except they had the one thing missing, the singer. They all, all them singers just couldn't get it. And I, I came out here and went, oh, yeah. And they were like, okay, you. And so uh, we uh, put a band together, uh, together called Eat a Peach, and we did the whole Fillmore East album. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's a band out there doing that now. I forget who it is. Yeah, it? yeah. But we did it when the Allman Brothers were broke up, so we didn't want to disrespect nobody. But I moved over from guitar to that. I'm in B3, and uh, we were playing at this club over here in the South Bay, uh, the Bodega, back in the day. And uh, I was playing whipping post. I'm like, I've been run down. And all of a sudden, this dude tapped me on the shoulder. And I was like, man, who the fuck is it? I turn around, it's Greg Allman, man. He goes, hey, can I play my song? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we wound up being good friends, man. And then I, I started playing in Allman, uh, you know, the Greg Allman band up here and uh, staying at his house on School Road. And, boy, I could tell you some stories. I mean, we went, boy, that guy, he's a, a rolling uh, TV show, reality show on his own. He's a, he's, he was it's always been great whenever I've met him. I'm good friends with his son, Devin, actually. He and I are good buddies. Oh, cool. Yeah. Devin, actually, uh, you know, Rough Records is sending me Devin's new CD. Uh, oh, yeah. I, well, I remember this was back in, like, 92, and I remember uh, when Greg was showing me. Uh, I never met him, but he was showing me pictures, and I was going, damn, Greg, you can't say this. You can't deny this ain't your. You, you ain't lying, boy. He ain't. He can't get out of child support on that yeah, one. Yeah, I go. You ain't gonna. Don't even. You can wear a fake mustache and put on a turtle. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah. I met Elijah though uh, back in the day. Uh, Greg took me to L.A. He was gonna be on the. Uh, this is how long ago this was. Uh, the before Jay Leno had the show, Johnny Carson show, and. Uh, we was back there, and uh, he went to Cher's house, which used to be, like, his house, too, I guess. And uh, Elijah was there, and uh, his hair was, like, green and blue. And and uh, he said, Dad, I'm playing at the Whiskey at Go-Go. And, and Greg said, cool, man. He goes, how much you getting? He goes, oh, no, we're playing for free. We're selling tickets, boy. And Greg turned three different colors, and we went over to the Whiskey at Go-Go and yelled at the owner. And I guess Greg's kid's the only kid that got paid out of that whole trip. God, I'm, that, I remember those days, man. That looked that that almost turned into a real bad thing. That whole pay to play thing. Pay to play, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're hey, actually that's... they're actually still doing that nowadays. We we, we were uh, doing an interview with Robin Lee Martell uh, last night. Me and English Don, and he was talking about there's still places up in New York where you actually have to pay to play. I don't oh. doubt it. I don't hey, you know. want you guys want me to blow your mind? That's what got me into being a the biker band. When the the pay to play shit started, I mean, we were opening up for uh, you know Fog Hat Molly. I mean, uh, there's a there was a place over here uh, that used to always have concerts uh, in San Jose, and and being that we were the only real s kind of Southern rock thing over here, we all, we got all the cool acts, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, and then uh, he was only paying us like I think. Three hundred dollars to open up for forty-five minutes, and then he went into this pay-to-play shit. And I guess he worked with Bill Graham, like running coffee or whatever back in the day. And that was his claim to fame. The guy's name was Jack, and he was like, "I worked with Bill Graham." And I go, "Yeah, well, fuck, man. You know, I can, you know, I remember Grateful Dead uh, playing for free and all, but at least they got like up the ladder. And I don't, you know." Uh, I go, man, I ain't doing this no more. And he goes, you're missing out on a cool thing. You're playing in front of 3,000 people. And I go, man, I'm playing in front of 3,000 people for free. Exactly. And I, go, 
I'm from the South, man. Slavery's uh, slavery been gone. Yeah, and, uh, and, you know, so Bill would have never. Bike, Bill, started, Bill Graham would have never done that. Well, Graham, I know, man. I know, yeah. man. This guy was just on his. He had his own. You know how them club owners are, man. They're like the McDonald owner. Uh, they think like uh, they're the boss of the world, and everybody's their employees. And and you know, I I started playing fucking music, so I couldn't get a real job. You know. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, I started hanging out, and uh, eventually I started playing uh, the biker bars, and of course, then I started meeting all the, the the club members, and then I started playing at the clubs, and that's what got me into doing all of that, man. I didn't want to go do that fucking pay to play shit. Yeah, you can't. It's it, we never once did it in hell and high water, and we never would have, never. Yeah, <laughs> that's what kept us from going to L.A. Actually, because we were going to go there, and. And we just, we, once that thing started, nah, no thanks. Yeah, well, I heard Nashville's like that, too. You know, It's not pay to play, really, but it's, uh, you don't get paid unless you get tips. That's how a lot of those guys survive down there is on tips. And it's, wow. I mean, there's guys down there playing on the streets with open guitar cases. You throw change in, and there's, and the guys in the, and the thing of it is, though, is all the pickers down there are really good. It's it's. I mean, you, yeah. you don't go down there and run into a bad, a real bad band. Usually. Well, I just one of uh, Charlie's good friends, Guitar Mac, just posted a picture of him recently on Facebook, where he's playing on the sidewalk with a little amp and his guitar with his guitar. case open. Oh uh, yeah, man, that goes on all the time down there. There's a guy down there actually that makes. You know, that I swear makes fifty thousand dollars a year working on the street. Oh yeah, man. Hey, I'm telling you, they fight over them streets. See, I'm from New Orleans, man, and uh, you know the musicians are. I mean, they, they same thing. It's it's a place where a lot of great musicians are. But uh, way back when I was a kid in my neighborhood, uh, we go in the, in, on. I live like four. I lived on Governor Nichols in the French Quarter. My family owned the. Uh, a cat. My aunt, my aunt owned the whorehouse, and my uncle's owned a little bar. And uh, so I grew up all in the in the shit, right? And so when we were when I was eight, nine, ten years old, we used to have this little thing. And I learned it from kids older than me, where you find a tourist in, in, on Bourbon Street, and you say, "Hey, Mister, I bet you I can tell you where you, where you got them shoes. I can tell you which state, which city, what time." And the guy's from like Tennessee or West Virginia, and he's going, "This kid don't know where I, you know, got my shoes." And so I go, okay, I'll bet you $5. And so uh, he goes, okay, kid, where? You got them right here in New Orleans. It's 930 on Bourbon Street. And he goes, well, I go, I didn't say where you bought them. I said where you got them. You got them here. And I go, but I don't want you $5, man. You were getting ready to go walk in there. That place is $50 for some crawfish. And so, man, I can take you down the street, man, hook you up. Before you know it, I'm making $100 off this guy just for being his tour guide, right? <laughs> when I went there years later, you know, I started playing with uh, Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones is the one that took me from New Orleans and brought me to California. And Deacon played with Freddie King and, and Curtis Mayfield. And his, his brother, Harold Jones, played with, with, with Count Basie then. And, uh, anyway, Deacon, uh, you know, we was out here and, and Hook uh, brought me out to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival with the radiators and Robert Cray, right? Yeah. And I went to my old neighborhood to pick up one of my friends because when we were kids, we were watching Led Zeppelin and Humble Pie. And I said, one day I'm going to fucking play here. And my friend said, well, first you better learn how to play an instrument. So now that I knew how to play one and everything, I said, fuck. So I went to go pick him up, and this little black kid jumped in front of me and goes, hey, mister, I bet you I can tell you where you got your shoes. And I said, here's five dollars, <laughs> motherfucker. You ain't getting no more money out of me. This used to be my corner. <laughs> that's hilarious man so hey you don't even have to play an instrument and you can make some money on the street corner okay <laughs> yeah we got it we, i actually i'm still in the works with um with dylan chambers um i'm going to be doing an interview with lester chambers he was telling us a story about how he hasn't gotten royalties. Yeah, in I love thirty Dylan. something I love years. Jan Lester. It's just crazy, the music world. Yeah, well, that Lester man, he he gave me uh, one of my bucket lists. Is uh, he was over here living in the little neighborhood? We all we all got houses up here at the foothills of the mountains up here, and uh, 
a lot of old musicians, Lydia Pence and Cold Blood and Donnie Baldwin from Starship. And he was up here and he goes, man, I don't have a band to play the 40 year anniversary uh, uh, Woodstock in San Francisco at Golden Gate. Can I use your band? You, you want to come play it with me? And I went, man, I, I yeah. Man, we went over that thing, man. 800,000 people we played in front of. And backstage was like the retirement home for all the old cool guys from back. Uh, uh, Quick Silver, Silver Messenger Service and uh, Malo and Country Joe McDonald. I mean, boy, they were partying it down backstage, man. So, anyway. Oh, hey, man, you know, I really like your music, brother. I was listening to some of the stuff uh, Dillinger was playing. Hey, man, I... You guys really got it going on, man. I really, I, you write some really cool stuff, man. Dude, I appreciate it. Thank you, bunch, and thanks for playing it all the time for us. I really appreciate it, y'all. Hey, uh, so, what do you think uh, of the, what do you think of this uh, show I came up with, man? Uh, uh, it's on the internet, and uh, it it don't cost us millions of dollars to run it, and uh, a lot of folks on motorcycles, uh, motorcycle folks, uh, uh, just constantly on here from all over the world, man. It's uh, we got it on the iPhone apps, and uh, uh, it's a lot of technology. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for my little nephew, I wouldn't know what the hell's going on. But <laughs> page, I mean, you know, my little nephew moved to AT and T satellite out of orbit when they were like sixteen years old, like about eight of them. Good so, lord. Yeah, and you know what? I used to tell him my my two boys played football real good and basketball, uh -huh. and I used to tell him when he was younger, I used to go. Hey, what are you doing in this fucking room playing on this stupid fucking TV thing with the butt? Why don't you come out and fucking be a real kid and play some football? I mean, I'm sure glad he didn't listen to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, man. It's uh, the whole technology thing. It's 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 a tough nut to crack. We're, we're it's like we're pa our whole band is past the age of you know being young. So it's like, well, we got one guy that's still in his 30s. So. Yeah, uh, but, but you know, it's like we're just—it's—it's it's weird because like these old guys that little kids can run circles around on any social media or anything like that at all. Yeah, you remember when the email was kind of—I remember the first time my my wife is twenty years younger than me, and she was started, you know, learning how to book. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. I'm I'm pretty cool, man. I'm a cool like old guy. Okay. Anyway, uh, she uh. She started, you know, what do I do? I go, well, you get on the phone. I'll give you the little rap. And then you know, she started calling up some folks. And she didn't fuck around with the little gigs. She went right to the Buffalo Chip and the Love Ride. And, I mean, she went to the big ones, right? She uh, goes, you know, you play all motorcycle music, man. We got to head up on all these people. Just fuck. So she went for it, right? And then she, she got, I was in the living room. And she goes, we got an email. You got your first gig over here in uh, Buffalo, New York. And I went, what's the email? Yeah. Yeah. Was, you know, I mean, once I found out the email was the thing that books you, I learned all about a fucking email, okay? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's – we put together entire tours in Europe on email alone. It's like, Yeah, remember when we have, used to have to mail out them big old promo packs and the press kits? And, 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 we had, and, and another thing, too, is, man, I used to have to go play 20, 30 fucking shows, man, at the little dude drop in and just to get people to hear my song and – now I just put the motherfucker on iTunes and come on my radio show and go on Facebook and I'm still here in my living room in my pajamas drinking my coffee. Yeah, it's a lot. In some ways it's a lot easier. In some ways it's a lot harder because it's a because it's been made a lot easier. You got so many more people doing it, so it's like yeah, it's true. You know, that's the thing. It's like there's no audience left. Everybody's in a band, you know. It's like All right. hey, I got you know. a quick question, Art. Oh, Shatuck. Yeah, to know, Art. Hey, Art. He wants to know when you're going to come back and play with Brian Flynn. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I haven't talked to him. I, I go do gigs in Mexico with Brian on occasion and in Colorado out west, and I haven't talked to him in a while, so I, have, I don't know. I, it's like, you know, it's like I was saying earlier, Skinny Molly's just like become my existence these days and it's like i'm not doing a lot of outside stuff anymore uh, yeah like they say what that's almost like vegas what what happens in cabo stays in cabo it's true <laughs> <laughs> sammy's got a hell of a place down there yeah it's a 
it's a great place to go. I really like it down there. I haven't been, and it's uh, it's been two years since I've been anyway. So I, I used to go. I used to practically live there. Yeah, I've I've been to Cabo a couple of times. The first time I went, let's say, I partied for two days straight and was in bed for four. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It does happen. It, Jay Johnson and I, the other guitar player in Skinny Molly, we went down there for a month once, and it was the longest year of my life. <laughs> Damn. Hey, let's uh, let's let the folks hear your other tune if if you don't care and uh we'll get together some more questions here cool all right here we go a little bit of if you don't care oh charlie you still there yeah all right i got my coffee and uh my toast Pat the dog on the head, and I'm getting ready to roll one of them bad boys up. <laughs> Thank God for California and the message. <laughs> Shit. Louisiana, I'd be in, in Angola Penitentiary cutting you sugar. You would, man. man. So, yeah. Hey, man. So, uh, I think uh, all the cool music's coming back, man. Classic rock, southern rock. I think it's all coming back. Uh, it, it's doing that loop. You know, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of that. It's like that's how you still got the Allman Brothers and Skinner out playing to big audiences. You know, it's like they've got they're playing to almost three generations of people, basically. And, oh, big time! Yeah. yeah. So and that's uh, that's that's a, that's a really good thing, and it's uh, that's keep. There's so many people that are being kept in business because of that than that normally wouldn't be. So yeah, I'm I'm, ha I'm happy for it. Well, Woody, Woody, Woody and them are doing the booking right now, and uh, I'll give him a call later on today. Uh, he's dying to go to Russia with me. He, man, it's a trip. Uh, I, I, I just did a big interview with you know who Mickey Jones is. He used to be the drummer for Bob Dylan and Johnny Rivers and Kenny Rogers, and he's a movie star too. He's the guy with the long red beard, and uh, he's in that Justified clip flick on uh, FX now. But he's been in movies with. He was on. Uh, Tim the tool, tool Time. Yeah, I know who he is. I know who that yeah. guy is, yeah. He's a really good friend of mine, right? And uh, uh, he's done everything, man. This guy's played, hung out with the Beatles. And you know that little earring you get when you go around the world and the equator and all that shit? Yeah. It's some Navy thing where you, you get this cool earring if you, like, go past the equator and dive and jump and... He's done all of that, and uh, he's been in movies with John Wayne, I mean, uh, Steve McQueen, and I mean, and he looks over at me in the interview, he goes, you've done the one thing I've never done. I'm kind of jealous, and I went, what's that? And he goes, you went to Russia. And I go, well, hey, wicky dicky do, okay, I, you did the five million things I've never done, okay? <laughs> you know, and uh, Woody, uh, same thing, he was like, man, how do I get over to Russia? And this guy's like a trillionaire, man. I'm like, shit, just get on a fucking plane and fly. Yeah. Come with me. And he goes, yeah, but man, is it cool to go over there? And they, the first thing they all worry about is, uh, is it going to be really you know, like crazy over there? To fuck? And I go, well, I don't know about all of the crazy shit. I mean, I, I, I kind of, as soon as I land that plane, the crazy people pick me up. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the wise guys over there are friends with the, Putin and Putin's friends with the Moscow Hells Angels, and they're all best buddies. Oh, so, I know. Yeah. It's pretty cool shit. But anyway, it's uh, Russia, man, is the new frontier. I'm telling you, man, they love our music over there, man. Hey, you know what? I just sent, I think I'm the first person to ever pirate my own fucking music, okay? I swear, <laughs> dude, hey, hey. I sent my CDs over there. You know, I emailed them all my artwork and and, and my and my uh, and mailed them the hard copies. Mm -hmm. Two cents a CD. Wow. Yeah, and he's doing them all over there, and he's already got them selling at all the stores, all the stuff. He goes, "When you come in summertime, I give you big wheelbarrow full of money." I'm like, "Thank you, God." Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, man. it is. It's it, it's it's uh. Russia is still like a, a redeveloping nation, and it's uh, they definitely have a good rock music uh, fan base over there. I mean, that's why their festivals, when they do festivals, they're really big. 
Well, they, hey, man, the thing is, is they got this system where if you make $5 million and under, Putin don't come after your money. If you make $5 million and over, Putin comes after the money. So there's a lot of people like my friend that's got the tobacco company. He, like, figures out how to just make the $5 million and under, right? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. But, but the, you know, what it does is it makes so much money that these people give their workers good money. They take care of everybody because they know if they give their workers good money, they're going to make more money. You know, and everybody yeah. can fucking money. And look, the doctors over there, uh, they're hooked up with the pharmacies all in one room. Yeah, so, no, it's that uh, way in some places in Europe, too. Man, I love the hell out of that. I went over there. I had a cold and we were going to ride b motorcycles. And, you know, they, they go, man, you, you know, you want to get some medicine? I go, well, I don't, you know, I don't, how do I do that? They go, come on. So I went in there and I told the doctor I had a sore throat, man. He hooked me up fucking codeine and this and that. And then I go, okay, where? He goes, just go to a room right there and pick up. Yeah. Damn, they don't have this shit. I wish they had this shit in America. I'd be fucking there every week. My knee <laughs> hurts. My elbow hurts. Uh. Yeah. Hey, man, it's the new front. I'm telling you, man. And you know what? Hey, this is how weird this shit is. I'm playing at the Buffalo Chip, right? I got They, they built me a stage over there. And uh, I was auditioning. I mean, well, we auditioned the drummer. And we brought him out. We were teaching him on the road while we were, we did a bunch of shows before we got to the Buffalo Chip. So it was 4 o'clock in the evening, and that's when everybody's gone riding. So there ain't really too much happening at the campground. And I was in my shorts, flip-flops, with a big old fat joint in my mouth. And I'm telling the guy, uh, okay, so go to the E here, go to the A. And this golf cart pulls up with these dudes with cigars and girls and cameras. And uh, I start singing in the mic a little bit, you know, well, my bit. And he goes, can I please film you? And I go, well, we're just practicing right now. And he goes, it don't matter. We shoot in Russian movie. And I go, okay, go ahead. So, man, we started doing a little bit of a song. And he goes, I must have you in Russia. And I went, okay. And I wasn't even playing in front of nobody, man. That's how fucking weird that shit was, man. Fuck, I was like, damn, this only happens in movies and shit. All right, we're going back live. All right. Okay. All right, hey, we're back. That, actually, we played two in a row. We also All played right. Biting the Dog. I got a couple questions here. Um, Johnny Neal uh, wants to know, let's put it out there, they want to know where they can get your autographed CDs or posters or T-shirts. It's uh, all at the web. Our, our official website is... Uh www.skinnymollyrocks.com and the, right now the autograph CDs are up there I think they're 15 bucks including shipping in the US and then we're, we're going to have t-shirts and other stuff up there later my web guy is like completely slammed right now but we'll have them up as soon as we can get them up and we got a, a new t-shirt that looks really cool I think people will like all right, hey, Tammy wants to, wants to hear your favorite quote. She wants to hear you say, I don't give a damn or something, something you used to say. I don't know. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> something about I don't give a damn if you don't care or something. Oh, I don't give a damn if you don't care. That's that song she's talking about. Okay. Yeah. She said she just wanted to hear you say the line. She's insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, you guys, if you want your CD, an autographed copy, or an 8x10, get over to SkinnyMolly.com. It's SkinnyMollyRocks.com. SkinnyMollyRocks.com, and Michael, make sure you guys get one. I saw the picture the other night. You guys had, what, probably thousands of CD covers signed. Yeah, it was we signed we signed like three hundred of them. So the first three hundred of them that get sold will be signed. I think that they're that we're about halfway through them now. So if you, if you want one, get over there and get one. Cool. Hey, we got a lot of people asking if you wouldn't mind doing an acoustic song for us. I don't have an acoustic guitar here. Um, I've got, they're in the shop. I've got that one that I had out last night, but the strings are so bad it won't tune. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I don't, uh, probably better not. It's too early in the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're always welcome to come back any other time and play one. 
cool, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, uh, what's, what's some of the venues that you guys are up and coming and doing here in the, in the near future? We've got some stuff coming up in March. We may be in Florida and Daytona in March. I'm not sure, so I can't swear to it. But um, we just got offered another European tour in June. So we're going to be going back to the U.K., France, Finland, possibly Germany in June and July. And then we've got some Monsters of Southern Rock stuff coming up in August, some bike events. And so we're, we're pretty, we're, right now we're just promoting the album and, and doing stuff for that. But we'll be out doing some dates in March and, and April and May in the States. I just don't have them all solid yet, so I haven't posted them up. But as soon as I get them solid, people will know from our website or our Facebook. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, But yeah, we just took another Europe tour because we just had to. The money was too good to pass up. Hey, I'll tell you what, a lot of them other countries right now are booking the hell out of American bands. Like Charlie was saying, he got the Russia deal. But, um, you know, Pat Savage has been touring the U.K. for the last couple of years. And that's what he said, you know, the money is excellent. I couldn't pass it up. Yeah. it's uh, We've been, Skinny Molly's been, been playing over there at least a couple times a year since, uh, since we started in 04. So it's it's uh, it's a good market for us, and uh, people like the music over there a lot. So we just keep going back. Herb said he don't care about that guitar; just sing a song. <laughs> That's your Herb. buddy, your Herb. buddy Herb, trying to put you on the spot. You know, Herb, man, I love you, partner, but don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to give away another shirt, or? Uh... Yeah. Let's give away another shirt. How about you want to you want to pick the question again? Mm, I don't have I didn't have one then, and I just came up with it on the spot. Let me think if I can come up with one. Um, oh God, no, you better do it. I can't come up with a good one. How about you, Charlie? You want to come up with one? Is he, is he there Who's right the there? best guy? On BIC Radio right now, who's in a southern band that is my new friend? <laughs> Dillinger? <laughs> is that good enough? Who's very awesome and a humble guy who comes on our show and don't act like a big rock star and wants the green M&M's taken out. <laughs> we Charlie did a show the other day. Um... We we called it the P A C B show. P A C B punk ass crybabies. Oh my god! Well, there was a. I told everybody the name of punk ass crybaby. It could be in uh, music, uh, politics, uh, sports. Uh, t- boy, they were just rolling on. I mean, I couldn't. Just, I couldn't stop the overflow. I bet. Yeah. Well, yeah. I bet that that's a good one. Okay, here's a, look. What kind of guitar? does michael play what's his favorite guitar what brand of guitar does michael love playing on michael has quite a, quite a few guitars yeah you know, but he's... you got a couple of you know he could always lie and say that one when someone calls in they win a shirt i'm trying to help people out here <laughs> <laughs> i know that one he just got he likes yeah there is one brand that i go with and it's uh USA, it's a USA brand. That ought to make it fairly easy. You want me to do the noise, the the soundtrack? Do 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 do. Yeah, Jeopardy. Do 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 do. Anybody get it? American brand guitar. His favorite guitar he likes to play. That's an American one, and that's what we love here. American. Yeah, everybody. Exactly. Well, let's see. Let's see. The first one was um, John Neal said Mike is Death Fender. Nope. The next one is. Ah. <laughs> the next one is uh, Roger Schultz said Gibson. Roger wins. Roger wins, and you get a you get a t shirt and a free trip to Jamaica and a bunch of cool stuff from Good Time Charlie's. Uh, medical card dispensary. 
All right, Roger, uh, shoot me an email at Dillinger at BICProductions.com with your name and address. I'll get it over to Mike and make sure that T-shirt gets out to you. And size, Rog. And size. Yep. They, one size fits all. If he's, I wouldn't say that. If he's, I got some big friends. If he's, if he's too big, then he can wear it as a bikini top. There you or go. Head. There you go. And we, I actually was talking to Jasmine Kane the other day, and she, she's asking the question, who or what color should I make my new band T-shirts this year? Well, she's going to be playing in Sturgis and a couple other, um, you know, events and all. I said, let's. I said you should make them pink, and let's see how many guys you can get to wear pink in Sturgis. Yeah, I bet she could do it though. She's she's. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I bet guys would wear those. I mean, yeah, she could she, at least. She's awesome. a little bass player, man, and uh, she's going to be in Daytona with me. To, she, uh, hey, that little girl, the first time I seen her was at the Easy Rider show in Sacramento. And I was saying, that little girl's going somewhere, man. Yeah, she's she's doing pretty good. She's I met her at an airport in Memphis, and uh, she came up to me because she'd seen me in Skinner. And I, and I talked to her for a while. She's very nice, and I wish her the best of luck because I know she's really good. She gave me her CD, and it, she's really good. Yeah, man. We play her stuff on the show all the time. You know, hey, we, we try to play a lot of the, the, the people that are out on the road that don't get a shot at stuff, man. And it's kind of you know, two reasons why I started this show, to to preserve our motorcycle history, our blues history, our southern rock history, and uh, to get some of the biker bands that don't really get uh, love from the music magazines and stuff like that. Because they're, you know, like the Fry Brothers, Big Mike Griffin and uh, Pat Savage and uh, you know, Sasha Mulligan, Missy Calgar, there's a bunch of, uh, yeah, there that Ta- Tammy, yeah. Tammy actually came up with, came up right under Rod, right under Roger with the, with the answer and even hey. gave the name of your guitar. She said, hey, you, hey Michael, she said, you used to call it sugar. Call it sugar. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's actually the. The complete correct answer. My favorite guitar is a Gibson Les Paul 59 Junior that I've got, and her name's Sugar. All right. I so we'll just, have to do, we'll just have to do two T-shirts then. Well, you probably already got Tammy's name and address, right? Uh, no, but she can send it to me. <laughs> Tammy, hey, you know how to get in touch with Mike. Shoot over your size. And uh, he'll get you a T-shirt out there also. Hey, so, Michael, I, I was just thinking back. I don't know. I think it might have been around the same time, 2005, 2006. Uh, we did a gig in uh, Beaumont, Texas at the Ford Amphitheater with Blackfoot and Molly Hatchet. Were you around in that trip then? No, that's when they first put – I remember that, that tour, actually. But that's when they p- first put Blackfoot back together. I remember when that was going on, and they did a run through Texas. I wasn't – That was a cool gig, man. Everybody yeah, came – I wasn't out on that one. Yeah, I named all my sh- – uh, you know, Sweaty Betty is the girl that used to live in the neighborhood that used to come to all our houses and sneak in the window. So yeah. I named my guitar Sweaty Betty, my motorhome Sweaty Betty. And uh, <laughs> my motorhome Sweaty Betty, man, we had everybody, man uh, – the new singer from Molly Hatchet, the big boy that wears the cowboy hat. Bill. Yeah, he's a nut, man. I, I should have never let him in. Boy, I, I should have had, like, vampire venom or something at the door. I mean, boy, he came in and went, yeah! Oh, I'm sure he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, boy, he was, he broke out an encyclopedia. Okay, you got this, you got this, you got that. I was going, man, what do you think I am? I'm probably, We drove out here from California. We had to go through Texas. You know, the, the signs where it says don't mess with Texas? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me put my encyclopedia out. Do you have this? Do you have your? I'm opening up for you. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty. But, hey, uh, great gig, man. And, uh, you know, Beaumont, Texas, that's where Edgar and Johnny's from. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Texas is a great place to play, though. It, it, I mean, it's probably the probably one of the best places in the states to play anywhere. If you if you can get a good gig in Texas with a good crowd, it's hard to beat. It really yeah, is. Yeah. Well, the, the Banditos took me up out there at that Lone Star Rally, you know they they get a pickup band, and I just fly in and play over there with those guys. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it's, I love the Lone Star Rally, man. It's 
close to my home. I'm not that far away from Louisiana. I can still get the good seafood and everything. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, so look, Mike, man, I I really want to thank you, brother. I mean, hey, man, look, I've been in this business a long time, just like you. And uh, you know, there's the rock star guys that want the green M and M's taken out and uh, don't want to sign no autographs at the end. And then you got guys that I call legends, like BB King and Hook and Ray Charles and and, and, and Greg, I mean, there's just folks out there that, uh, you know, they, they're very humble. They don't even come at you like a rock star. And you're in that uh, that category, dude. And I really appreciate you uh, coming on the show and, and, and being a part of what we're doing, man. I really, I mean, I, I love you, dude. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate you. And thanks for, thanks for having me on. And thanks for supporting all the independent music that you do. And, and, um, Thanks to Dillinger playing all this stuff. and It was a fun hour. I appreciate it, y'all. Thanks a bunch. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, like I'm going to try to do what I can and get you some show. I'm, I'm going to talk to the people at the Redwood Run. I'm good friends with those guys. And, uh, yeah, yeah, we, did that last, we did that last year. We actually did that last year, and we're in for it again this year. But put in a word for us. That'd oh, hey, you play, what day did you play? Did you play on a Saturday? I think so, yeah. Oh. I played the Friday. I played with uh, Willie's Willie's kid, Lucas. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I remember he was there. That's right. Yeah, we were. But yeah, we played on the Saturday in the late afternoon. Yeah, you you played with the Fry Brothers. I believe we did. Yeah. Yeah, we play. I played. I headlined on. Uh, well, after Lucas left, uh, I played. Uh, I closed the show uh, uh, on the Friday. So, and we didn't stay Saturday because I had another gig, or I would have been hanging out, and uh, you would have got to hang out with the medical card people. <laughs> Well, let's try to do it this year. All right. I'll talk to him, man, and try to hook that up, all right? Hey, you know, uh, Hollister's coming back this year, too. I might be able to hook that up for you. That'd be good, man. Let me know. I think it's the 5th and 6th of July, right, when I come back from Russia. Hey, man, uh, it's the birthplace of American bikers, baby. It is that. Hey, uh, hey, Mike, if you don't mind, I'll shoot Charlie over your phone number. Yeah, shoot him my email and my phone number both. All right, cool, no brother. And I'll see what I can do to hook up some stuff, man. Maybe we can do some shows together, man. That's what Sounds I was like just better. thinking. Both of you guys are trying to get the shows to different bike events. That would be a hell of a venue. Skinny Molly and the good time Charlie Brechtel band. Yeah. Yeah, you that need sounds to see, like a winner. You ought to see my new bike they made me, man. For the, I got a, the new album, Iron Voodoo. Lester Chambers came and played on it. Big Mike Griffin. Even You know who Eric Buell is? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, Eric plays some guitar, too, man. Cool. Yeah, so he laid some tracks. And uh, Sonny Keaton from Beaumont, Texas, uh, built me the Iron Voodoo bike. And it's got the Voodoo Queen and uh, all those Florida Delees and black and gold. And I mean, it's just the bike is unbelievable, man. Right, man. So, and, and it plays my song. I got the sound system on it. It plays the song. <laughs> so I'm going to use it to move some merchandise, boy. There you go, man. There you go. I'm like ba- Bank, Woodson, Barman, Bailey. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I got the Iron Voodoo bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's presidential thinking, man. Good job. Yeah, we're looking. Another thing, too, brother, if you ever up this way on tour in Northern California. Uh-huh. Uh, we live up at the foothills of the Sierra Mountains up by Angels Camp. So it's, aura, it's really beautiful up here. My brother won the California Lotto back in 92, okay? And yeah. uh, he's the one that puts up all the old rockers up here and makes sure they're – I mean, he really takes care of some folks up here. He's a good-hearted person. And uh, uh, we got lake houses and uh, cottages. And so uh, you give me a call, man, and I can get you guys all put up, man. Uh, you won't have to spend no money for the – a couple of days when you're heading to, like, Tahoe or you're coming to San Francisco. You can come up here by us and uh, hang out and meet my brother and go to the Nugget Bar. Uh, Sounds like a winner, buddy. Yeah, the Nugget Bar is in uh, Murphy's, California. It's uh, been a miners bar from way back in the 19-old-somethings, and uh, they've been serving <laughs> miners. They've been serving miners from ni- since the 1912 uh, or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, he owns that, and... Uh, uh, it's pretty cool shit, man. And, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, old retired club members live up here. And uh, I live up here and run my show from up here. And uh, it's just really beautiful, brother. And, uh, uh, man, you, you once you come up once, you, you once you get the phone number and hook up with us, man, you always come back. I'll tell you that. 
Ah, oh, man, I can see it happening. I appreciate your hospitality, man. We'll do that. Hey, Mike. Yeah, man, my brother would love to meet you guys, man. He's really into help, you know, hooking up with the old guys. And uh, Well, I mean, you know, we're not the old, old guys, but we're getting <laughs> We're the younger old and guys. He's got, a, he's got this big ranch that we got the rehearsal stuff, and uh, he keeps all his – he got this, the number two Viper when they first came out. Jay Leno – Arsenio Hall got one. Jay Leno got one. I can't remember if Jay Leno got the first one or it was Arsenio Hall. That's when Arsenio Hall had his show. He was pretty big back then. But my, my brother got number two, and it's the Red Viper. Cool. And, then he bought a black one, and then, I mean, but he don't ride none. He's like Jed Clampett, man. He he's got all this cool shit, and he puts it in a thing, and it's got cobwebs on, and he drives an old pickup truck with his cowboy boots and his San Francisco butt baseball cap. <laughs> Good for him, man. Good motherfucker, man. I'm telling you, hey, a uh, lot of a lot of folks, uh, you know, he Greg Allman, uh, uh, uh back in the day, man, he used to come up here and hang out, and we go over there, and uh, yeah. He's just a really cool guy, and uh, you, you guys have got an open uh, invitation to come up here and hang out with us, okay? Thanks, Even if man. I appreciate run, it. You do the Redwood Run, you guys can come stay here with us, and we can all caravan up there together. That's what we'll do. Yeah, man. You have fun, brother. We'll, you know, we got some motorcycles up here. We'll take you on a cool ride. and yeah. We got all kind of cameras. We, do a, we film all kind of cool shit, so we'll do a interviews and all that shit. Cool, man. It sounds great. Hey, I appreciate you all a bunch, man. Thanks. All right, Mike. Hey, I'm going to I'm gonna close the show with one of my favorite songs off the of Haywire is Lie to Me. All right. Yeah, all right, a- I'm going to roll another one up. Thank you for being on the show, and I'll get your phone number, and we'll hook up. I love you, brother. Thank Thanks, you so bro. much, man. Thanks, Charlie. All right, Mike. All right, you- hey, look, I bet you five dollars I can tell you where you got your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike, you want to say uh, you. you want to say something to the fans before you go? Yeah, man. Hey. Thanks, y'all, for supporting our band. It's it's all I can really say. I'm humbled and just like that we've got so many great fans, and I really appreciate y'all a big bunch. Thanks. Cool beans. Hey, um, we're going to get – I got a couple. I'll shoot you over the addresses and names of the guys that won the stuff uh, and their sizes. And uh, thanks again. You know, like I said, thanks for getting on the show. No problem, uh, buddy. Thanks, man. Uh, from what I understand with tuning guy, Mike from Rough Records, um, he's actually going to start giving me the exclusive CDs and demos of the newer bands that you guys are working with. From cool. Rough. So, um, yeah, Mike's a good cat, man. He's a good guy. Great, great. Um, all right, I'm going to shoot you some stuff over at, um, on Facebook here real quick. Let's go to Skinny Molly with Lie to Me. Thanks again, Mike, for being here. See y'all. Bye. All right, we're off the air. Um, that's cool. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's what I was wondering if you were going to, because I checked the mail this morning. I was going to see if anything came, but. Yeah, I just thought I'd just do it this way and we wouldn't have to do it twice. Right. And uh, save you some hassle. We'll just send it from here. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, what is what is your email? I'll shoot it over to your email. It's uh, real easy. It's mikeestes at bellsouth.net. No. I used to have one of them emails. Yeah. All right. Actually, I... I you know, I, don't get me wrong again, because I'm bad with pronouncing names and stuff like that. I had one person told me, no, it's Mike Tess. Then I, you know, no. I, was, I was saying Estes, and no, no, it's Tess. It's Tess. The E silent. No. The, uh, did Thunder Roads get up with you yet? No, I haven't heard from him, man. I'll have to shoot him an email then, because he said he was going to give you a call within the next couple of days, and... Yeah, I was. Lo- I've been looking to hear from him. I ain't heard from him yet. I'd love to hear from him. We got something going. Right, right. All right. Well, I'll definitely shoot this over to you. I'll even shoot you my shirt size. All right, cool. <laughs> so do and that. Then, then do like that. I said, I'd love. To, I'd love to get an eight by ten for that wall. No problem. I'll put it in the. I'll put it in the mail for you. All right, brother. Thanks again, man. And when, when next time you get a guitar around, you let me know. I'll throw you up here live. Okay. Cool. 
All right, Mike. Thanks, brother. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Bye. Peace.